So a lot of advertisements use attractive actors. This is most likely because there's an ethos that attractive and likeable people will be more persuasive. Therefore, it makes sense to select an attractive communicator to increase the persuasive power of your message. Chaikin suggested in 1979 that this might be because attractive people have attributes apart from their looks that make them more persuasive, such as being more optimistic and more fluent speakers. Now, this doesn't imply that there's some kind of genetic link between attractiveness, optimism and communication ability. It's more likely that because people like spending time with and talking to attractive people, attractive people get more practice at communication. It's possible that attractiveness also acts as a decision cue that helps us make an effortless response to an attempt to persuade us. In 1990, De Bono and Teleska wanted to test this idea. They gave participants a message about the benefits of using a suntan lotion called Savage Tan. They told participants they were testing out advertisements before the product was introduced to the market. There were two parts to the advertisement. In the first part, the experimenters manipulated the attractiveness of the woman. Half of the participants saw a slide of a physically attractive woman who was darkly tanned. The other half saw a slide of the same woman who was made to look less attractive by changing her hairstyle, what she was wearing, and putting some glasses on her. In the second part, the experimenters manipulated the strength of the argument. For half of the participants, the advertisement involved an audio recording of either a strong argument for using the sunscreen or a weak argument for using the sunscreen. In the strong argument condition, participants were told that the sunscreen was scientifically proven to provide protection from harmful ultraviolet rays and contained special pigments to prevent premature aging and wrinkles. In the weak argument condition, Participants were told that the sunscreen was silky smooth and easy to apply. Finally, they asked participants what they thought about using Savage Tan, the sunscreen. Let's take a look at what they found. On this figure, we can see participants' attitudes about the product on the y-axis, with higher values indicating more favourable product attitudes. On the x-axis, we have the attractive and unattractive communicator conditions. The blue refers to the participants who heard the strong message about using Savage Tan, and the green is used to indicate those who heard the weak message about using the suntan lotion. Now, I haven't actually mentioned this yet, but De Bono and Teleska also measured how much their participants were attuned to social signals via a construct called self-monitoring. The idea being that those who are more highly attuned, the high self-monitors, should find the attractiveness a particularly engaging social cue. As we can see in the results, for those scoring low on self-monitoring, they simply relied on attractiveness as a cue to persuasion. They were more influenced by the attractive compared to the unattractive communicator, regardless of how strong the message about using the sunscreen was. For participants who were more attentive to social cues, however, the high self-monitors, Attractiveness did not act as a simple cue. Rather, for the attractive communicator, participants were influenced more by the strong message compared to the weak message. The attractiveness basically increased the engagement with the message about sunscreen. There was no difference in how much they were persuaded by each of the messages when the communicator was unattractive, however. So this suggests that communicator attractiveness serves at least two purposes. For those of us driven by our own internal values and ideas, the low self-monitors, attractiveness seems to be a simple cue to persuasion. For those of us more attuned to external social cues, attractiveness helps grab our attention and gets us to think more carefully about the persuasive message. 